The safety of the men throughout his widespread department is an important matter with A.E. Perlman, chief engineer of the Rio Grande. He has a wholehearted respect for every man who helps to prove that railroading is not a dangerous game, that the stigma of danger has been created by negligence, thoughtlessness, and inattention to common sense safety practices. Perlman makes it a point to call attention to good safety records. Some time ago, he personally congratulated all the men working under this roadmaster's jurisdiction. They had achieved a commendable safety record, maintaining 250 miles of track for a year without a reportable injury. They proved, as thousands of other railroaders have proved, that you can work around the clock and around the calendar if you simply use your head, think safety, and work safely. To the ordinary guy, it's just a railroad track. But to you men who build it and maintain it, it's a lot more than that. It's accomplishment, a fine job well done. Let's discuss how much it costs to put it there. Not how much in dollars and cents and steel and wood, but how much in needless physical suffering to men who didn't use their heads, who found injury and pain and sometimes death for their carelessness. Railroading and football have a lot in common. There is the little bit the public sees, and behind the scenes there's the endless planning and working and perfecting that they don't see. It all adds up to teamwork. Whether you're a football player or a section hand, teamwork gets the job done. Teamwork calls for a lot of skull practice. That's a football phrase for use your head, pal. The football team has a captain. He supervises the play. The section foreman does the same thing. He checks that lineup in the morning and all through the day. He has the current timetable, the correct time, and permission to use the main track. His first responsibility is the protection of his men. He has to be alert and thinking ahead every minute. Safety depends on teamwork, and teamwork starts when you roll out that motor car in the morning. Every day you chalk up here is a score against injury and death. Check times and line up before you put that car on the track. After you tangle with a train, it's too late. Give that car a thorough inspection, foreman. The safety of you and your men depends on it. If there's anything wrong, now's the time to fix it, not later. With that car and those tools, and everything else you do, develop the habit of being neat. It goes hand in hand with safety. They're both plain common sense. Check your tools every morning. Don't take out a defective tool. Good tools do a safe job. Poor tools imperil your safety. Fit a piece of air hose around the striking face to prevent splintering at the edges. Don't endanger yourself by using a defective tool. It's your responsibility to report it to your foreman. It's his responsibility to take the faulty tool out of service and replace it with a serviceable tool. When a tool's in this condition, don't tape or replace the handle. Exchange the whole tool for a new one. Teamwork and skull practice pay off here. Every man in the right place for the job. Good footing. Lifting with your legs instead of your back. Keeping your feet in the clear. Safety includes little things, like twisting Lizzie's tail. It may kick, so don't put your thumb around that handle. Have good balance. Keep your face and body clear of the crank.
As soon as the car is rolling, make a brake test. Don't start something you can't stop. At least two men facing forward and one watching the rear. That's the safe way to play it. Sloppy habits breed trouble. If you throw your tools on there any which way, you probably do your work like that too. And a disorderly gang is merely the reflection of a sloppy foreman. What do you have, teamwork or hard work? A gang without teamwork wastes a lot of energy and always runs the risk of an accident. No inspection, no check on the time or lineup. Nothing but grief and bad tempers. Off they go, hell bent for trouble. Dropped a shovel, never missed it. No insurance company would take the risk on a gang like this. They didn't miss the shovel, but that bar may give them a bad time. If it falls under a wheel, it'll bounce them up plenty. The foreman had a short day, but he sure got it the hard way. Probably won't enjoy the extra hours of leisure. When your motor car is following another one, maintain a safe interval of at least 600 feet between the cars. Don't do it this way. You endanger the men on both cars. That's a close call. Not keeping a sharp lookout for grade crossings is a good way to keep from living a long time. Go ahead, give him hell, he's got it coming. He's a pretty good Joe in a lot of ways, but awful short on brains. He endangered his men, picked up a body full of sprains and bruises, smashed up his motor car. He'll probably lose his job. And that sign was there riding with him all the time. Safety first. When you go romping down the country without checking your lineup or watching for unscheduled traffic, you're inviting the kiss of death. Maybe you'll get hit over the head with a high-balling locomotive. That's a light engine, 200 tons light. There have been men who weren't able to jump soon enough. Whenever you get off your motor car to do some work, set the car off too, where it won't foul the track. Even if the work is just a few steps away, use that set off. It may save your neck. Get that car off the track. You think that's carrying safety too far? Overdoing it? Go read the record. It happened just this way, right on this spot. Some of you knew him. A lot of you heard about it afterwards. Maybe you forgot about it. Anyway, here's how it happened. He didn't hear that train until it was almost on top of him. Then he tried desperately to yank his car off the track. Nobody knows what he was thinking just then. Probably figured he could jump clear. He was riding his luck, but death was riding the head end. A thousand tons of freight slapped him on the back. A trainman came on the run. He might as well have walked. Can't help a corpse. They picked the pieces of the car from the front of the engine. That's the car he didn't set off because he wasn't going to be there very long. But he stayed there quite a while. Then the coroner came. That's how a negligent signal maintainer turned into a vital statistic before his time. He got his name in the papers, but nobody reads his own obituary. It's all in the record. You'll find him there, a figure on the fatality list. Do you like your wife and kids? Do you like to eat? Do you like to dance, to tip a beer with the boys, or play poker with your pals? If you do, take a look at the record sometime. Let it sink in good.
Heavy work calls for heavy planning and plenty of teamwork. Every man in his place and one man directing the operation. Center the clamp on the rail. Stand clear of the ends. Don't move the rail without a man and guide rope on each end to control the motion. Nudging an adzer into position with your knee is foolhardy and dangerous. Keep both feet beyond the tie ends. Watch for ground irregularities. A foot that slipped under that vortex of cutting steel would be mincemeat in a split second. Rail laying is a heavy operation that demands the utmost care every moment you work. Mark the middle of every rail before you move it. Be sure the hook is properly fastened and dead center. The crane operator moves the rail only on signal from the one man in charge of the work. On the ground, stand clear. Never take your eyes off that piece of steel, nor let any part of your body get beneath it. Guided with both hands held over the rail head, never place your hand around the end or under the base. Pay special attention to the placing of your feet. The safety of his men is a good foreman's first consideration. Before he moves that human cargo, he inspects the whole train, looks over his motor car, checks that every man is aboard and safely seated. He exchanges signals with the man on the end before he starts the train rolling. He never pushes a train, always pulls it. That way, he's right out in front so he can see where he's going. An alert foreman never permits his men to be a hazard to each other. Now he does what he should have done in the first place. He spreads them out. Ample space between men allows each to work without accidentally striking the man next to him. A safety-minded foreman who thinks ahead spreads his men out before they come to any grief. An aligning bar is no substitute for a rail fork. If you use the wrong tool, you suffer the consequences. Safer always to use the tool designed for the job. Know the right tool to use and know how to use it. Even a claw bar is dangerous in the hands of a careless man. Place your hands far enough down on the claw bar to avoid smashing them on the opposite rail. In an operation like this, teamwork really counts. Unless the gang is carefully coordinated, somebody stands a chance of being hurt. Precise teamwork includes balance, rhythm, careful footwork, every man working in unison. A good foreman and smart men get the job done safely.